Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we've got part two of my little series here I'm doing on my get home bag for travel. All right, so it's full. <laughs> I'll give you a, a quick look around this guy. It weighs in at about 18 and a half pounds without the water bottle. This water bottle's full right now. Remember, this is supposed to be a smaller, a little less conspicuous. I know it's, you know, the tactical desert tan and the small attachments and all, but a little less conspicuous get home bag for travel. A lot of the times when I uh, go on trips into Vegas for the night or when we go away for a day, I don't want to lug a huge, gigantic bug out bag that may have everything I need to survive, but it almost has too much in it. Um, so something like this kind of fits that bill. I can strap this on my back, roll my suitcase with my hand. Um, I can even uh, carry my uh, weapons bag with me. I have a small kind of, looks like a laptop bag. And any firearms, you'll notice I don't have firearm stuff in my bug out bags because that's usually separate. Well, that's what this is for. This is a separate bag that just carries a few basic survival supplies as well as some convenience items for staying in a hotel. Like, I have a coffee press in here, you know, the, uh, the one I reviewed previously. And I'll show you that. But anyway, we're going to tear into the bag. I'm going to let you take a look and see what all is inside here. We're going to tear it apart, and then I have the fun of putting it back together again. So I'm going to watch the video closely so I don't forget where I put everything. We'll be right back. Okay, as I previously mentioned, this bag is made up of items I've either reviewed previously, um, some items that I've taken out of my bag and replaced with better stuff in my bigger bug out bags. So we're going to start off with one of those items. And it isn't complete yet. There are still some things I need to add to it and change out. And as time goes on, I will be adding better quality gear to it instead of the stuff that I've removed from other bags. Anyway, we're starting off with this little light here. This is an Ozark Trails flashlight. I believe it's 100 lumens. Nice flashlight, runs on triple A's, and everything in this bag runs on triple A's. That's something I made sure about. Um, here's the neat part about this. If you're in a hotel room, if you have to camp out, you know, if you're stuck alongside the road and you've made yourself a little makeshift shelter, not only is there light here, but boom, there you go. You got a tent light. That's pretty darn bright too, and it's got a little hook on the top, and runs on triple A's. Like I said, the whole bag runs on triple A's. So that's on the outside. Next right here. Now you guys watched my channel, you saw this a few weeks ago. My little, I believe it's Adsone solar charger? That was the name, yeah. And this also has a flashlight on it. And this is 15,000 milliwatts. Got a little solar panel on it all to charge it, although it's rather slow, but hey, it's something. And this will keep my cell phone charged. So again, it has a dual purpose. Survival in the worst case scenario, but common practical purpose. And I put it in an old mag pouch out here. Now, get into the good stuff. Top part here, make sure I'm in, in uh, filming on frame. We're starting off, eventually I'm going to replace this with a Leatherman, but we're starting off with this little Alpine Gear sort of Swiss Army knife. It actually works. I've actually used this. Um, I used to use this camping when I went on field day a lot. Um, with my ham radio club and I've used it to cut string and it's got a nice set of scissors that actually do cut so yeah it's not uh, Swiss Army it's not a brand name and eventually it's gonna get replaced by a Leatherman but for now I had it it went in um, here's the rest of my stuff for the phone got a little uh, USB charger that plugs into the wall and a short little cable this is the cable that came with that and of course backup reading glasses that goes into pretty much every bug out bag I have because they really make reading a whole lot easier. All right. Now this pouch under here, I'm not going to pull everything out of it. This is the medical pouch. This is all first aid stuff plus just basic everyday, you know, I got my Prilosec back there for my wife when she needs it. Um, we have a leave. We have a, I love to use these tins for allergy meds, roll aids, a leave, um, aspirin. Um, and just basic first aid stuff. I do have some quick clot in there and a tourniquet. I doubt I would be using that kind of a thing, but you never know. You know, you, again, this is a trip bag, 
and a convenience bag and sort of a get home bag, but it also is for worst case scenario. So, I don't want to dig all that stuff out because it would be a mess. And most of you have seen the inside of most first aid kits. Nothing really all that different about it. The secondary compartment here. Got the stove. Another thing that I reviewed on my channel, this was my car stove. Um, I've replaced it with a different one. This runs on propane. You've seen this one. It's the little fold-out, butane propane, I'm sorry. It's a little fold-out stove. Let's dig it out of here without the cable being in the way. When it folds out, these spread open. And I think this is going to eventually get replaced with one of those little micro stoves. Um, Coleman makes the ones that just sit right on top of the butane bottle, but I do like the way this pans out, you know, and the fans out, so you can actually put stuff on it, like a pot or something. Always have my N95 masks, you saw those in the video I did previously. My one can of the uh, butane propane mix, um, that's more than enough for to get me through any kind of emergency or anything like that. Headlamp. Stan Sport Headlamp. I got this when Big Five opened in town. It's about 150 lumens, got three levels. It's you know, focusable, and I really don't like the focusable feature on these. I'd rather they just be bright, but it was five bucks. so. And it also runs on AAAs. And it also was something that I had. Water filter, the usual. My favorite Sawyer Squeeze water filter system. Had an extra one, went into the bag. Will I use it? Probably not in a hotel room, but in an emergency? Yeah. Okay, moving on. Kinder. Fire starting stuff. Got a little pill bottle full of um, cotton and Vaseline. Got some dryer lint. Got some char cloth. Again, you know, I'm not going to be starting a fire in a hotel room while I'm on vacation, but I might get broke down along the way and need that. All right, let's see what's next. Ah, yes. Camilla's Titanium Knife. Very light. It's not a thick knife. It's not a heavy-duty chopping knife, but it will cut me some firewood, break down some sticks. I actually have batoned with this, and it actually works. Um, it's a pretty strong knife. Keeps a nice sharp edge. I do have a sharpener in there. It's a small stone. Um, I'm probably not going to be putting too much abuse on this again, but it's nice to have. And along with that, I have Coleman saw if I have to cut anything down. Um, you know, and you don't think about stuff like this, but maybe cut through drywall in a disaster or emergency. Something like that may save your life. Chances are, it'd probably be used for cutting down wood if I had to build a shelter along the way from where I'm going or back, or if I had to leave the hotel on foot, you know, and maybe start a fire somewhere to keep warm. Uh, let's see, work gloves. I love these work gloves. I actually took these. These are kind of a leather Midwest industry, I believe. Um, Midwest gloves. They're kind of a leather kind of thing. and You can see I've used them. I used them for gardening this year. I'm going to buy another pair, but these work so well and they're so comfortable and they're really durable, so they went in the bag. Gloves are always a handy thing to have in your bug out bags. Two of these. Light sticks. Had those already. Here's the little sharpener I was telling you about. Uh, 50 feet of power cord. Again, I'm going with a tarp shelter in this bag. So I'm going to need something to hang it up or guy it or whatever, so need that. And good old-fashioned emergency blanket. Eventually what I want to do is SOL makes a really good, thick, bivy blanket sort of thing. And we're going to go with that. <coughs> I have the SOL two-person emergency bivy in here, but I want the thicker kind of heavy blanket that kind of keeps in. But, you know, for now, that's a good start. And in here, I've got my... Soap, camp soap. These are sheets. I don't know if you've ever taken cough medicine that you put in your mouth and it just dissolves. It's on a little flat sheet. Same thing with this. It's soap. Um, I have used these in the past. They work very well. And for situations where I forget to bring soap or they don't have enough soap in the hotel room or if I just got to wash my hands beside a creek on my way back, hiking back home, you got soap. Emergency poncho. Um, this is more along the lines of if I get stuck changing a tire in the rain, you know, really isn't a survival tool. However, you know, couple it with a tarp, with whatever else I have, you know, maybe it adds a little bit more shelter, a little more protection from rain. And of course, good old baby wipes. 
can't have enough of those baby wipes. So I'm going to put this stuff back in in a second here, and we'll get on to the second level of what's in here. All right, back with you. I wanted to pack that back up because I hate when I pack a new bag and I forget where I put stuff and nothing fits again. So I wanted to do that right away. One of the things I forgot to show you outside here is this guy here. It's a little uh, Duluth Trading water bottle. I picked this up for 75 cents at our local um, Goodwill. I thought about going with a water bladder for this thing, but then I realized with the amount of stuff that I'm putting in it, and this little spot back here with the padding on it that opens up, I don't think I'm going to really have um, enough room for a full-size water bladder, and I don't want to put too much pressure on it and pop it. So I figure something like this is perfect. I'm going to pop it off while we do the review here because it sags the side of the bag down and it makes it hard to show you what's inside. So we're just going to get that, if I can get it out of there, get that out of there. Now, there are a few things I want to add to this bag. As I said before, I want to add Leatherman. <clears throat> I want to add some cash. I always have at least 100 bucks cash on me hidden away somewhere. But um, usually in my bug out bags, I keep 50 to 100 in small bills. Just in case I'm separated with my other daily carry stuff. And um, I know where more money is. Or if I need more money. I mean, you know... You could have an emergency, you could have gas prices shoot up overnight, boom, you're stuck if you only have 100 bucks. So we're going to break into the second part of this bag, the back part here. Now this is more of the, um, some of the stuff I use on trips, some of the stuff is long term, you know, emergency disaster stuff and some of it's convenience. That's the best way to put it. Right off the bat, we got our Stanley, okay? Now you may think, why am I carrying this big thing around with this water too? Well, this is also a coffee press, and I did a review on it. You can search back in my videos a couple months ago. Um, it can be filled with water. I can make coffee in it and take it with me and just carry it along. Um, it's kind of big, and it's kind of a big thing for such small real estate inside the bag. But a lot of times, you know, and this is the convenience end of this bag, a lot of times when we go to hotels, they don't have coffee machines, and I don't feel like going downstairs and you know whenever we travel it's always either you got to go downstairs you got to drive three blocks away and pay 10 bucks for two cups of coffee i can make coffee in my room with my little burner and this guy um show you quickly for those of you that didn't see the video previously this is where you'll drink out of it okay and if i can get that back on you take the whole thing off and this is the press. And like I said, if I gotta ditch this in the bag and my wife needs a water canteen and we come across some water, this is perfect. You know, this will keep it cold, we'll take care of it. Um, but if not, it lives in there. So I kind of consider it secondary water storage plus a convenience item. Because I like coffee in the morning. All right, next up, a very small cook kit. <clears throat> this is where my striker is. Again, this ferro rod and striker and magnesium is probably going to get upgraded to a much better ferro rod. Um, striker I probably wouldn't even use. I'd probably use the knife. And that Camillus titanium works very well on ferro rods. But it's there for now. Again, we're starting out. This is a cheap thing that I already had. You know, why go out and buy new when I can find something cheaper along the way that's just better? This is the Kershaw fork and spoon. And little cooking pot. I was going to go with my cooking cup, but I realized if I'm going to be making coffee, that uses up a lot of water, and that will almost fill the coffee jug up fully. Also makes it easier to cook instead of a little tiny cup. So again, it takes up a lot of space in the bag, but eh, it'll work. It does what it's supposed to do. And again, you know, this was something I picked up in a uh, secondhand store. I think I paid three dollars and it came with two more little nested things inside, like a little pan and everything. But I went to just the bowl for this bag. Just the cooking pot. Here we are, SOL Bivy. You've seen my, uh, my video on this one. Um, it's a two-person Bivy. It's really small. But it will easily fit. I, on my video, I got into it, and there was room for maybe three more people in it. It's really big. So it can be wrapped up around you if I'm alone, if I'm with my wife, or... You know, a situation where we're outside, it can keep us warm. Good thing to have. Okay, here's where I went nuts on the stuff sacks. This is all coffee. My ground coffee. Sweet and low, creamer, non-dairy creamer. 
And the reason it's in an orange bag is because this is probably what I'm going to pull out of here first. So it's the first thing on top there, orange, bright, see it, no problem. Next up, the red bag. This has food in it. I got a couple freeze-dried entrees in here, got a couple MRE entrees in here. Now, again, I didn't take a ton of them with me, but I have them in there because, oh, and a little MRE beef jerky. Um, I have them in there because you have situations where you may not be able to leave your hotel room if there's an emergency, if there's some kind of lockdown, some kind of terrorist attack. Um, maybe you're just hungry at 3 in the morning and don't feel like going downstairs to the cafe, you know? Or going outside to McDonald's to get breakfast. Regardless, it's not a ton of food. It's just enough to get you through probably a day. Um, after that, I'd be leaving wherever it was. Alrighty. Now, inside here, I have my four tent steaks. And I have a rolled-up tarp. I'm not going to pull it out because you can see that right in there. Can you see in there? Yeah, it's a rolled-up brown, heavy-duty, really thick tarp. That would be my shelter. Um, you know, I wouldn't want to go with a one-person hiking tent or something because, I mean, the chances of me using it are pretty slim. I have a vehicle I could camp in. Um, I'm already in a hotel room, you know, if I'm on a trip or on a vacation. And really, this is a bug home bag. So the only chance I'd use that is if I'm walking along the road and I need a place to relax or get out of the sun or whatever, I can put that up and be safe. And back here, the final little bit of it. Little AM FM radio, I had this in one of my bug out bags previously. It only works with these. There is no speaker in this radio. So it'll run for a really long time on two triple A's. I can clip it on, I can listen to it. Now again, eventually, yeah, I want to get a little AM FM shortwave with a speaker, but we're trying to do this economically, and we're trying to do this on gear that I already had. And of course, supply of AAA batteries. Now, like I said, there's a few things I want to add. There's a few things I want to improve. But for now, this is a pretty functional bag. If I were to take this on a trip with me, and like I explained previously, we meet clients in Vegas for the night. We're only 60 miles outside of town. If I were to take that on a trip with me, I'd feel pretty well prepared. Granted, it's not the same level of quality and level of supplies that I have in a full-size bug-out bag, but it's more than enough to keep me sustained for a day or two if I'm stuck in a hotel room for a storm, a disaster, a terror attack, whatever. And I can always get to my car and get more supplies. Anyway, thank you for watching. Um, I'm going to keep doing videos on this and keep up with it. And we'll uh, see how I improve it over time. And I may even change the bag. I'm pretty happy with the bag right now, but I may even change the bag. I don't know. So keep tuned in, keep checking us out. Don't forget to like the video if you liked it. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. We're trying to get to 2,000 subscribers. I haven't come up with an idea to do something with it yet, but I'm gonna try and do a nice uh, giveaway for 2,000 subs. So we'll talk to you guys soon.